Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris here and I wanted to take a look at BMW's latest announcement, the R18, which finally delivers the BMW Big Boxer in a production machine. Now you may recall seeing the Big Boxer power plant in a few custom creations, with BMW teasing riders with those prior to unveiling their own vision. There's a strong reference to BMW's history too, obviously as a boxer engine, but also harking back to the BMW R32, which is the iconic model that gets rolled out to demonstrate the brand's earliest offering, with obvious styling cues taken from their first machine, plus a more direct inspiration was the R5. BMW haven't offered a proper cruiser in recent years either, with the closest option arguably the R9T, which to cruiser purists probably doesn't count. Looking a little further back, the BMW produced the R1200C and R850C, with the former actually making an appearance in the Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies, although I had to look that up to confirm. As both a Bond and motorcycle in movies fan, it was a bit of a surprise it didn't leave a more lasting memory. Much further back of course, many of BMW's offerings more closely align with what we now classify as cruisers, as that was just the style back then. So this isn't new ground for BMW, but it's still an interesting direction as we see Harley Davidson expand out of just offering cruisers, where BMW offer pretty much everything else and are now adding cruisers back into the lineup. With Easter approaching, it's ideal timing for the giant egg-shaped engine that is the big boxer to break cover. With a capacity of 1802cc's, peak power of 67 kilowatts or 91 horsepowers at 4750 rpm, while maximum torque arrives at 3000 rpm with 158 newton meters on offer. That's very similar figures to Harley's FXDR114 for comparison and the engine itself on its own weighs 110 kilograms. The Big Boxer is an all new design, a two cylinder boxer obviously, but featuring a separate engine and transmission housing with BMW promising optimal reliability and ease of maintenance alongside generous performance with maximum revs reached at 5750 RPM. The Big Boxer runs an overhead valve drive with two camshafts, dual ignition, intake manifold injection and the BMSO engine management system with inspiration taken from the R5 and R51 models, but running four steel valves per head, air and oil cooling, plus a constant mesh six speed drive with single plate dry clutch, with anti-hopping and self-reinforcing characteristics, so basically a slipper clutch from what I can tell final drive is shaft driven as well. On the chassis side of things we've got a steel double loop tube frame with tubular swing arm designed to give the impression of a rigid frame with that single frame running from front to rear. However there's a central cantilever suspension strut concealed with 49mm front forks. There's 120 mils of travel on the front and 90 mils of travel at the rear. Now BMW are promising control and comfort from the suspension with the R18 weighing in at 345 kilograms at the curb. And that's not a lot of travel for the suspension, even if it is fairly typical in the category. Dual 300mm front rotors are joined by four piston calipers with BMW Motorrad Integral ABS, linking the front and rear braking systems and distributing force between the two. The rear also features the same 300mm disc alongside a four piston caliper. Wheels are traditional wire spoke offerings with a 35 by 19 inch front and a 5 by 16 inch rear running 120 by 70 19 inch front tire and 180 by 65 16 inch rear tire. On the ergonomic side of things the seat height is a low 690mm off the ground with mid mount foot pegs and a typical cruiser ride triangle with BMW promising a number of genuine accessory handlebar options and seat options to further customise the ergonomics. Now at this point you might be thinking this sounds like a basic cruiser with limited electronics but I just haven't got to them yet. This is very much a modern BMW with LED lighting and the option for adaptive turning headlight offering a better more directional throw of light at up to 25 degrees of banking angle. The single dash offers an analog speedometer with digital display and the indicator lamps are designed to be invisible when not lit. 
Add to that a keyless ride system and things are starting to get a bit more high tech. Then there's riding modes with rain, roll and rock. Also standard is automatic stability control, although it can be turned off, alongside engine drag torque control or MSR, which BMW states prevents rear wheel slip due to too much throttle or aggressive downshifting. For downshifting, the bike essentially cracks the throttle valve to help prevent that lockup. Both hill start control and reverse assist are also available as X factory options alongside heated grips. Other points of note according to BMW is the use of metal for bodywork in line with the more traditional style, boosting build quality at the cost of additional weight, a trade off that will probably be far more acceptable to cruiser riders while fuel capacity is 16 litres. There will also be a special first edition version offered worldwide for those after a piece of history and featuring a box with a picture of the engine on the lid, historical tank emblems and slotted screws, assembly gloves, an assembly screwdriver which doubles as a keyring, an R18 first edition cap and leather belt, plus a book on the history of BMW Motorrad. There's also an enormous range of accessories including luggage, machined parts, machined front wheels from 16 inch up to 21 inch, ape hangers, beach bars and much much more. The 2020 BMW R18 will arrive in Australia in quarter 3 of 2020 with a limited number of first edition models available which come fitted with reverse assist as standard and pricing starting at 31190 for those with that edition, while a standard version will be available starting at 26890 Overall, the R18 is an interesting new offering, combining a strong historical connection with modern design and technology and a relatively competitive price tag, all things considered. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to sub and hit that notification bell. And of course, let me know what you think below. Is the R18 the right mix of retro technology, performance and cruiser? Thanks for watching and stay safe out there on two wheels.